Blue Water Vaccines is a biopharmaceutical company developing transformational vaccines to address significant global health challenges. And with me is the CEO, Joe Hernandez, to talk about everything you're working on. You've really got a lot of kind of vaccines in, that you're uh, working on the pipeline. Let's start with an overview of the company, and then we'll kind of delve into each one and where they're, what stage they're at. Wonderful. Well, thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate you uh, having us on this morning. Um, our, our company is a spinoff from Oxford University. Um, primarily, our, our first program was a, a vaccine uh, for universal flu, basically a once in your lifetime shot for, for influenza. And that was really the genesis of the company. Mm -hmm. Subsequently, we've in licensed a number of other assets and we're working on uh, about five different programs, all in vaccines and all in relevant rural infectious diseases. Okay, so let's talk about each one of those. Yeah. So we'll just start with, a, you know, we'll go through each five, what you're working on right now. <clears throat> well, the, the first one, our lead program is an, a universal flu vaccine. And that is uh, effectively, um, again, a vaccine that covers you for the whole life um, for any influenza infection. So Really? So it's a one-time yeah, vaccine? Yeah, that's the goal. So rather Amazing. than doing right. a, a yearly shot, you get once in your life and you're covered like you are with, you know, measles and mumps and rubella. Uh, and the genesis of that was really work done, pioneer work done by a scientist at Oxford named Sunatra Gupta. And she's actually a mathematician by training of, of ironies. And she studies uh, epidemiological evolution. And one of the things she found out about Influenza was that it really wasn't that diverse. You know, we we think you know we think the flu is really very diverse, but in reality, it's not. It's got limited ability to to uh, evade the immune system. So, we basically identified epitopes. We call them epitopes of limited variability. And when we put that in a vaccine, we get universal coverage. And so that's the the strategy behind that vaccine program. We're quite excited about where that's headed. And. Um, yeah, so that was the genesis. Okay. We also uh, licensed the technology from St. Jude's Children's Hospital. We're very close with them. They're great partners of ours. And of course, they're focused on children's disease. They had been working on a vaccine for otitis media, which is, you may know it as middle ear infection. Oh, yeah. This is, mm -hmm. uh, if, you have a, if you've had the pleasure of having a child. Uh, yes, yes. I'm sure you've experienced <laughs> the, the challenges and the, uh -huh. the, uh, the hopeless uh, situations that parents face with uh, middle ear infection. So they, they're developing a vaccine um, for that. We in license that program and we're moving that very aggressively forward. It actually also turns out that that vaccine has uh, indications or potential applications in pneumonia of the lung. Uh, so we're exploring that as well. That's obviously a, a more relevant, broader uh, elderly population as well. Um, and that vaccine is quite exciting because it's, it's what is called life attenuated. So it's a, a bacteria that we genetically modified to be um, present in your immune system, but not dangerous to give you disease. Mm -hmm. And we deliver it on the nose. So it's an exciting program. And we think that that'll be transformative um, for world health. Yeah, okay, so. no, for sure. And um, so where <clears throat> are these close to being approved? Where are they in yeah, they're, clinical trials? Yeah, they're in the early stages of development. So we're, you know, we're initiating human trials here in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Especially with uh, strep pneumo, we think that'll be our, our lead program. The other ones are still doing preclinical work, so we're doing animal work and uh -huh. the scale up that's critical in in, uh, in these regulated environments. So yeah. we're working on. Well, what do you think of? I mean, we went through the COVID, yeah. You know, and vaccines became controversial and all that. I mean, I feel like yeah. that we are a victim of our own success. Vaccines have been so successful, we forget. Um, I mean, being yeah. There's a lot of you know. There's a lot of controversy in politics around COVID, as yeah, you know. Yeah. It became you know, um, science doesn't lie or cheat or, you know, science is science. It's very factual. And so in these situations, you always have to follow the science. And the science told us early on, you know, COVID was dangerous, but it was, you know, it was really applicable to a, a subsegment of the population. So when vaccines were developed and we moved very quickly and the government did a great job at moving vaccines through the development process very quickly, uh, there were some nuances around this vaccine that were controversial. One is it's a novel platform. Right, the mRNA. The mRNA yeah. has never yeah. been really deployed yeah. in humans before as a vaccine. So, you know, we, we, we're we in a new platform. Um, you know, we vaccinated universally. And, you know, I think when you look at the epidemiological data, it suggests that you don't really have to do that. And you probably had to focus on, mm. um, the, on the disease population that had, you know, a big burden. Uh, the elderly, people with comorbidities and so forth. So we've learned a lot. Um, I think the, the good thing is, you know, we, now we have a platform that we can use other um, vaccines for and other, for other important diseases. And we've learned that, you know, sometimes a, a tool for everybody is not the right tool. So I think, we, I think we've learned that. Well, and um, you mentioned the mRNA, but you're using attenuated vaccine, which is are. a different methodology. Well, right? we, have two, we have two platforms. One is a life attenuated, which means 
we take the organism and we genetically modify it to make it not as dangerous, but still um, be, be able to infect you as, a, as, a, as an organism, but not cause you disease. Mm -hmm. And then we have another platform, which we call the, the virus-like particle. And that one, we take a norovirus, an actual natural norovirus, and we genetically modify it and add the antigens, uh, the elements of, the, of whatever vaccine we want to develop. Mm -hmm. So that's our platform is slightly different than mRNA, but mRNA is a great tool. Um, I think we'll, we'll continue to see it in the marketplace. Yeah. And it certainly allows you to develop vaccines very rapidly, which is the reason why we, we deployed it in COVID. Yeah. Well, and I saw Moderna and Merck are working on a cancer vaccine yeah, yeah, with was, mRNA technology. Exactly. So yeah. um, that could be really interesting to see how Absolutely. that Absolutely. It's, you know, it's got a lot of applications. And, you know, um, again, we're, we're, we're understanding the technology, but I think we, we know how to make it now, which is great. We know, we know how to distribute these vaccines. I mean, these are, you know, the, the, the supply chain that was developed for COVID is... is would have taken 20 years, you know, we did it in a couple of years. So. Yeah, um, so let's talk about the company. You went public yeah. uh, here at the NASDAQ um, did, in February yeah. of 2022. Yeah, so recent. what was that process like? And I mean, where do you see the value in the company going forward? Yeah, no, for sure. So, I, I mean, being public was always a plan of ours and, and it was it's a long process, as you know, and a lot of work and, you know, we were, uh, we came out really when the markets were beginning to sort of, you know, recalibrate. And, uh, but we, we, we were successful. We, you know, we raised $20 million on our initial IPO uh, with very, very, uh, no warrants or anything. So it was a pretty straight out IPO. And then we subsequently have done two pipes and we've raised in total $38 million from the market. And, uh, you know, we were aggressive about our timeline and we were, we always wanted to be uh, logical with our use of proceeds. And we wanted to make sure we had enough to survive what we thought was going to be a turbulent market, which is where we're at now. Yes, <laughs> I'd say that's very much the case. Yes. <laughs> and so investors should just keep an eye on the clinical trials of these vaccines Absolutely. and see the progress. Yeah. Those are the main yeah, and vaccine, going forward. And vaccines are here to stay. And, and you know, I, I think um, I think we've learned from COVID and I think there are other diseases where vaccines are going to be important and they're going to be transformative and they're going to really help and advance human health care. Yeah. Thank you so much, Joe. Fascinating to hear about the Thank company you. and vaccines in general. Thank you so Thank much you. for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it.